these are questions I'm going to ask you, and they're they're important. So, they're so important. There's <laughs> big words oh. to explain how important. Talk they are, slow, but. I'm Canadian. Welcome to In the Isles, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm your unreliable host, Derek Berry from Vice Grip Garage. I have a very special guest with us today, all the way from Canada, believe it or not, <laughs> Dan from DD Speed Shop. Or is it DD Speed Shop, DD Speed Shop, DD Speed Shop? Pretty much that, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for making the time. I know you're a very busy guy. Well, I got to carve out a few minutes for the little guy, you know? Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> so you're down in Nash, Vegas. Yep. Doing some stuff for the day job. Yep. And uh, was happy to have you down yesterday. We did tacos and big blocks and parts stores. O'Reilly's, yeah. O'Reilly's. Never been before. So this is a true story. I, I can't remember what we were doing. I remember I almost wrecked the truck. Yeah. When I finally learned that you actually hadn't been to an O'Reilly Auto Parts. So, of course, we had the tacos first. Then we went straight to <laughs> O'Reilly. What did you think? I loved it. It was... Uh, there's a lot of stuff scram you know, crammed into one box. Like you look at the building on the outside and it's kind of unassuming. You're like there's thought, no way they have everything that you need in the building. I thought we were going into small town parts store and you were gonna be like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. But they had way more than we have at home. Wow. It was fantastic. That's cool. Now I normally ask right away, What's your favorite aisle in O'Reilly Auto Parts? So this is probably going to be tough for you because you don't have all the aisles committed. You've only been there once. Yeah. But do you remember a section or an area? Well, my favorite spot was that little hot rod area. The performance wall. They had like I couldn't believe it. In the regular in a regular auto parts store, you could get whatever you needed. Yeah, it's a jump of coke can aisle. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I liked it. Yeah. That's my favorite one. So it's all the stuff that you would normally get online, but you could just swing in and get your carb studs or fuel make it happen or... That's stuff that I buy in triplicate, minimum. Use it once, lose the other two, and then I'm right back to buying it because I can't <laughs> find it when I need it. So just go and buy it one at a time. That's the way to do it. Yeah, for sure. So if you haven't heard of DD Speed Shop, just to catch you up here, they're from Manitoba, Canada, way up north. And you've been doing the YouTubes for how long now? Oh, probably coming four years. Four years. You're known as like uh, Hot Rod Jesus or the tri <laughs> that Tri-5 guy. <laughs> yeah, I've been called a few words. Yeah. Those are nicer ones, yep. Yeah, so how long have you been like in the car community? When Obviously, it didn't start four years ago. You just don't turn it on. Uh, well, forever. So my old man was taught uh, power mechanics or like auto tech type thing mm -hmm. in high school. And uh, so he was in the cars. He was in the British stuff, so... We don't really? Hold, we don't hold it against them. Wow. Volvos and all that. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you went, he's on the British and you go, oh, big block Chevy. <laughs> there, so, yeah, 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 exactly. So there was uh, there's a big car show kind of once you're right at the end of the year, in, well, end of our year, September. That's when it gets uh, snowy. But uh, we were going home one day and there was a big block 70 Chevelle. You know, we were driving, I'm like, mm. I need one of them before I could yeah. even drive, and then that was the end of it. It makes a lot different noise than a British three-cylinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't my jam. So what got you into tri fives? You've you've built. I've watched you build. Geez, I don't know, half dozen at least, minimum, <sighs> dozen. You know, I hate the stock answer, but the, I love the fifty-five from two-lane blacktop. Yeah. You know, so that's what I built, and then uh, I wasn't really a tri five guy. I wanted one. I've been into Chevelles, Camaros, Le Mans, well, yeah, whatever it is. And then uh, you get one. Well, the next thing you know, you know, I'm at the where I get all my sheet metal panels. There's a guy there. Well, I got a '57 for 700 bucks. Oh, so you just buy it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, they just kept finding me somehow. I don't know. And then, well, you know how it is. The second you build one car, everybody on the internet is sending you every time they see a Tri Five. Check this one out. Check this one out. And my willpower is very low. Yeah, they're kind of um, instigators, you know. They they really. Yeah. It, and the same for me. Like Jessica and I agree. Like we're not gonna buy something for three weeks. Good one. It's to the point where she'll come to me and go, "Look, yeah, it's on the face space for nine hundred. I'm like, get it. <laughs> I'm the other way. I'll be on the couch watching TV with Danielle, and we're I'm you know I'm on Facebook where she'll just phone out of the hand. I'm like, oh, I guess we're That's done smart. today. Yeah, we got to make the mortgage. I get it. I get yeah. it. So you. Uh, I have adjusted well to winters and hot rodding. I think it was last winter you were plowing snow with the Tri Five. Yep, I've done that a couple times. Yeah, yeah, with snow chains yeah. and everything. Yeah, does it actually work? Sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than a square body two wheel drive in the winter time. So it's better than a yeah. shovel. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that was pretty fun watching that. And then this year I saw some guy took a Ferrari or something yeah. and did the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Do you have any more plans with Tri Fives this year? I know you're working on a Nomad. You're working on <sighs> yeah, I'm your trying ladies to, 57. I'm trying to finish them. My problem is when you know when you have a bunch of the same car, you end up borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. So I was doing lots of that. So had to buy a bunch of like headlight buckets and trim and stuff like that, trying to make them all on the road. But yeah, that's the plan. I got a 55 Nomad, I got to finish that. I'm thinking I want to take it on a power tour. And then, yeah, Danny's car was a 57 Chevy. It was one of the first ones. First one's done, on the road, ready to go, and then it became a parts car <laughs> to fix the junk I bought after. Very so, familiar. Yeah. Jessica's <laughs> nodding in the background. Like, no sorry, story. sorry. <laughs> So that's a good good segue to a, a question I like to ask because I've been there a million times. Tell us about a time that you've had a project where you might have gotten it 50, 60, maybe even 95% of the way and you're like, you know what, I am, I cannot look at this car for one more <laughs> minute, I'm done. It's going outside for a while. Whether it's just exhaustion, fatigue, can't find parts, you're over it. Do you have one of those? <clears throat> well, if you watch the channel, all of them. But <laughs> the the worst one was that Nomad. Yeah. I bought that thing in an absolute Hulk, and it was so much work. And you know what happened is I started uh, believing the hype where I got to finish it proper, like a real Nomad oh, should be. Yeah. And uh, we got to the point where it was in primer, and I was like, oh, now you're looking down the road of body shop jail or doing it myself. And you know how it is, especially trying to make YouTube videos. You can only sand so much where people are like, let's get the paint on this thing. Right. And that that those don't YouTube time and real time don't don't add up. Right. So I pushed it outside and sat in the snow for six or eight months. That's the right thing to do. And then yep. Uh, yep. yeah, it was fine. Then I mean the car cover froze to it, then you rip it off, takes the primer with it. It was good. <laughs> so we're starting again. And then uh, you did paint it. It was patina paint. It was natural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we it went from uh, high build primer to flat black, and we're fine now. Yeah, been there many times. We we were talking yesterday. I've done. We were into tri fives for a while, Jessica, and, and I just got kind of burnt out with everybody. The same thing. I can't believe you would just drive it like that. Why not just replace the quarter panel? And you put license plates on the floor. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I did. Have you priced out a floor pan? Yeah. yeah. So after I don't know half a dozen of them, we kind of just tri five guys are like Mopar people. You, if you don't walk the line, but you know what? You know they're coming around. We need you in the club, buddy. You got to get <laughs> yeah, another one yeah. because they were like unobtainium and expensive and all that. But now, I mean, I got a bunch of junk, and then I mean, there's, I mean, Newburn has that ratty yeah. fifty-seven hardtop, yeah. and then uh, that uh, Merlin's old school garage there. Yeah. He's got like starting to be a little more acceptable. I think it's not like you can only have them on the trailer with the car bra on them anymore. You can actually put right. miles on them. And I think generationally. The ages of the owners are changing a little bit finally. Yeah. And some of the old timers, I say old timers, maybe they're not that old, but they're starting to let go and realize a car sitting in a garage for 38 years because you're trying to do body work is no good. Yeah. It's better to be on the road. And that's with any car, really. Well, I've only, like, I've got two shiny cars, maybe. And I never drive them. Yeah. Like they didn't leave the storage unit last year just because it's, <laughs> you got to wash them. You worry about door dings and all that. Exactly. And, and it's just, you know, I'm, I mean, I use the hood of the cars as a workbench all the time. And that's what they're there for. Yeah. I remember one of my very first videos <clears throat> was a 69 Camaro. And I think I was replacing the window regulators on my Suburban and using the trunk of the 69 <laughs> as a workbench. That's what it's there for. I got hate mail for <laughs> six months. Oh, like, yeah. How dare you? I'm like, it paints shot. Yeah, it it's cares. fine. Yeah. No. What is your like ultimate dream project? The one if if money and time were like a restraint, what is it? Okay, I got a bit of a corny answer, but I mean, I've kind of bought and built everything I've wanted to. Mm -hmm. YouTube's allowed me to do that, and uh, even if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't go buy a brand new one. I'd still buy the junk because I enjoy. I think I enjoy working on it more, and I enjoy driving them now as I've gotten older. Sure. But uh, I'm at the point now where I want to work with other people on their stuff. Oh. Get more stuff on the road. That's what I'm all for. So you don't really have a project where you're like, man, I really like a Lotus or a Ferrari. I don't know the numbers. Yeah, I'll be no. Ferrari. Nine, 55 Chevy, 50. which I already have, and that's about it. Yeah. Nice. That's very cool. A lot of people aren't fortunate enough to be in that position or they're still trying to find. If Some just, people don't even know what their favorite is yet. You just keep lowering the bar, <laughs> and eventually you, you hit your dreams, right? 86 Civic. <laughs> you're done. Yeah, yeah. it's so easy. With mud flaps. <laughs> <laughs> so how many times a year do you come to the States? Probably two or three. This year we're trying to do a bunch more. So we want to do, fell in love with Power Tour last year. That was just that first was time. It's good having you along. That was, yeah. 
oh man, I appreciate you helping us out there and uh, taking care of us. But it's so far for us to go. Yeah. But uh, you know, anybody who's kind of far away, it's a pain. Get in the car, just make it happen. Yeah. Like once you're there, you fall in love with it. I mean, we had just 24 or five hours of driving just to day one, <laughs> which was a lot, <clears throat> but uh, it was worth it. It was a blast. And we want to do more of that. I want to do like tri five Nats, you know, there's endless LS Fest stuff like that. Yeah. Like it's just. Have you heard of Cruising the Coast? I'm doing that. Yeah. Are so you doing it this year? Uh, Cotton and New Bern are really twisting. They're pushing my arm. My yeah. I'll see you there. Yeah, yeah that's where I I'm at. I think we might go check it out. I had no idea it was such a big. Thing, like Apparently it's do. just you sit on the like a lawn chair and watch cars go back and forth on the whatever road that is. They had me have like you park and then there's cold snacks and hot dogs and you'd sit. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was talking to them, they're like, Yeah, yeah. I was like, Oh, that's a long, that's a long haul to drive down there. And they're like, just fly down. That's all we did. We didn't even drive our stuff. I'm like, mm, I'm in, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> see you there. Yeah. So what's your What's your daily driver? You've got a day job. We'll get to that in a minute. But how do you how do you commute? So I have a newer F one fifty as a work truck, but uh, at the fifty seven that I took on Power Tour, which is a four door two door converted, it's got a six liter LS turbo four hundred. Uh, I drive that all the time in the winter time. It's got studded tires, all four corners. It has heat. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, we have, it doesn't have factory heat, but I'm sure, see, we're in Canada, we have Princess Auto, but they have those, uh, must be seems heart freight, they have those like auxiliary tractor heaters, you know, you just run two lines in, it has the fan and the knob right on. Oh, yeah, on. you just send her all the yeah, way in. That's yeah. all we got in there, it works just great. That's one thing Chevrolet did really good, is the heaters will cook you out. Oh, yeah. Like, especially like this, the late 50s to like the early 80s. You might as well just break high off. Oh, Don't even use yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. It's just low and medium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when your feet are on fire, it's good. Yeah. So that's cool. So, I mean, you you not only build them, but you live them and drive them, which is what I try to do, too, is everyone drives my friends nuts because they're like, well, I'll meet you here at this time. Well, I'm always late because yeah. i got a dead battery. <laughs> the brakes fail. The clutch is going yeah, out. I got know. the tour yesterday. It was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we start this one? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that did start was the Bricklin of all things. That was the only had a battery. Isn't that weird? It had three of them in there, though. I was probably... Well, see, the, the charging roller failed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's off a boat. Yeah. So <laughs> couldn't find a boat charger. So I put four deep cycles in the passenger seat. And as she'd start bogging down, I'd just reach over and clamp on a new battery <laughs> and just keep going. I couldn't believe it. Of all the things that start, that'd be the one. That'd be the one. That was impressive. I'm trying to pawn that off on you. It came from Canada. Yeah. Was it Eastern Canada? Yeah. Yeah, the Maritimes, I think. I think we should get it back up there. We should do something with yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe it needs a big block Chevy with zoomies. <laughs> is that what it needs? I think so. There's a couple on the ground here, so come with it. Part of the price. <laughs> yeah. I see well, how it is. We could maybe work something out. <laughs> I'm good at IOUs. Yeah. I got one with a tree growing through it you can have for free. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're all hard. It's bored out. <laughs> <laughs> do you like Bricklands? Do you, no. do you have to like Bricklands because you're Canadian? or Because some people are really proud of them. It's part of the citizenship when you want a passport. Is that what it is? Yeah. I figured it was on like a test or a jam. Or... <laughs> I'm at the point now where I've kind of bought and owned the cars I've kind of wanted. You know, like, like you know when, you're, when I was young, you originally wanted like a LS670 Chevelle. Then you realize, hmm, I don't want that. I right. just want a Chevelle with a big block in it. Right. And, and then you have, that's way easier to obtain. And then, you know, I wanted like a 57 Chevy ragtop. I couldn't afford it, so I just cut the roof off one. And it's the same thing. Made it a ragtop. Yeah, there you go. And then... Uh, nice thing about tarps these days, they come in multiple colors. You it's want a handy. blue top, gray yeah. top, yeah. black top. You do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So I'm at the point now where uh, you'll just be scrolling and you're like, well, that's kind of neat. It's in the price range. And you buy it. Nice. That's you a lot of over, fun. You don't want to overthink these things. No, not at all. <laughs> What is one of the most ridiculous hacks you've ever done? And even in your own head, you're going, I don't think this is going to fly. But then all of a sudden it works and you're like, oh, that's pretty slick. So when I was doing, so I, I got that 57 rag top. So speedster, people like to correct me because it has no top. But it was a four door hard top that I two door swapped and I cut the roof off to make it into a convertible. And uh, so we're doing that. So I had two doored it with the roof on. I cut the roof off and I, and I needed floors. I'll just put the floors in from the top. Didn't do it, didn't pull a tape measure out. Bring them home. Danny's there, my old man's there. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's put this thing in. Well, she wasn't gonna go in from the top. I'm like, huh, well, that's a problem. And I welded the door shut and everything and try and make it all fit. 
Well, the second I unwelded the doors, the whole car just <laughs> pulled it in half because there's, there's nothing there. Yeah, there's right. no floors, no rockers. I'm like, oh, that's a problem. So at the front of the garage, I have a winch that I use for dragging dead cars in because it's a bit of an uphill. So I just took the winch and I wrapped it around the windshield frame mm -hmm. and I just pulled her back. Christined put her, it back. Put her where she wanted, followed her back up, and that was the end of it. There you go. You got to have a winch in the garage for <laughs> yeah. frame straightening slash body work. That's all you need. It worked out. It was a little sketchy. I was worried it was going to rip in half, but it's fine. I've done some stuff like that. The old independence, I straightened her out with the... I love that. That was good. The winch on the... I think it was on the ramp truck. Yeah. And I kept hitting it with my forklift. <laughs> and got her just dialed That's in. the best part with that kind of body work. It's like, uh, you know, when you got a huge whammo and you're like, whew, that looks bad. And you give it a, one of these with a sledge. And it's like 85% better. Yeah. Like, fixed. It feels like an accomplishment. Yeah, you really did something there. <laughs> Otherwise, you're 15 times sanding and accomplished nothing. You and I probably get asked more than anybody on YouTube, when are you going to paint your car? <laughs> yeah. It's always never. Yeah. What's your most frustrating project you've ever had? You know, the problem is right now, it's uh, I generally don't get frustrated. It's the waiting on parts is frustrating, I find. Because... Talk, yeah, we talked about this last year maybe you can't get anything up there right well it's hard it's definitely hard and it's expensive and it's you know the, the exchange rate it's uh it's brutal but I mean, what are you gonna do it is what it is i can't complain but uh nothing really scares me anymore it's just you work until you can't find the part and then you either hack it or you wait around until it shows up and that's the way she kind of goes or just pretend it never happened and yeah do something else yeah nice you got to have four or five cars on the go at least so you're always busy Right. I never realized how good we have it in the States <sighs> when I can just literally, you know, for example, I can order right now an O'Reilly and they'll deliver it to me or get online and it's here tomorrow. Yeah. You guys really don't necessarily have that. Well, it's different. I mean, these O'Reilly's open like seven days a week and stuff mm -hmm. or and like till in the evening sometime. Yeah, nine, ten o'clock. So, I mean, if you need stuff, I mean, we have part stores, but they shut six Sunday. Six o'clock? So we'll get, we'll get off work at 5.15, you got a beeline to the parts store. I am a planner. No, I'm not. I mean, all thread rods always available, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, if you want like a hot rod parts, like see like that little hot rod section you had at O'Reilly's, we have to go to like a legitimate hot rod store or whatever uh, you want to call it, like speed shop. Yeah. And uh, well, their hours are like their banker's hours, 10 till 6 or whatever. I mean, they're great guys. And they got going on, but it's it's to the point now I'm kind of friendly enough with them where you can kind of text the guy and he might give you a late night open the store and oh sure. hey, you need this because got a box of valve strings <laughs> hanging out the back <laughs> yeah. door or something yeah well that's cool uh, at least you have you're finding some ends and ways to massage it and work with it a little bit you got to grease a few palms every now and again yeah, yeah make it happen because I definitely am not a, most of my orders go in at like eight thirty at night <laughs> yeah. after like seven long. Next, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what you're getting the next day. Yeah. Eh? Next day it's like, why are there yeah. <laughs> blow up pool, you new boots? The old double order, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a few air fresheners, you're fine. Have you ever had a time sensitive project? Have you ever built a car for somebody else or a show or anything like that? And you're like, I am under the gun to get this done or I'm going to so, lose the shop. No, no. I've never worked on anybody's stuff ever, really. And, uh, my favorite comments, people are like, thank God he doesn't work on other people's stuff, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. And the way you sell, you're selling, you're selling, I'm like a criminal selling these things. Well, there's videos out there. Like, it is what it is. Yeah. The the only time we were kind of time sensitive was actually last year for Power Tour, is I'd put that 57 together and I drove it around. And uh, I put in like a factory aluminum radiator, like a eBay special. And it was fine. But at home, it was starting to get a little hot and it wouldn't bring it back down. Then you just, you know, Google Tennessee weather. And I'm like, Oof. She's yeah, hot. A little hotter, yeah. So that was an all-out thrash to put a rad in it, and uh, it wasn't fun. I didn't, well, the second there was a deadline, I, uh, well, you do it every day. It changes things a little bit, yeah. And for me, my favorite thing in life is procrastination. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, I, I'll know it's coming, and I'll plan the know it's coming, <laughs> but I won't plan anything else until, like, 72 hours. Then it's like, I have to do something now. I got what my little saying is, uh, tell Danny all the time, so I don't plan. And then everything goes to plan. <laughs> Problem solved, you know what I mean? I like that. <laughs> uh, what is the worst conditions you've ever worked on a vehicle before? For, 40 below. It's probably your average day. No winter, winter time it gets that, so you know, the truck dies in the driveway and you gotta change the starter or something like that. Well, by the time you screw around and do this and that, you might as well just grin and bear it. But you know, it's one of those things like the cold, you know how it is. Once your hands go numb, 
they're numb. It's fine. Yeah. It's when you try and warm them up and you go back and forth. That's, that's the brewer. Yeah. You just go through the suck once. Yeah, I mean, you got to get the deep freeze right away. And then if you just look at them until they start turning gray, that's when you have to <laughs> yeah. take a little break. Yeah. But yeah, everyone's like, why did you move to Tennessee? And it's like, when you go to open a hood and your hand freezes to the mm -hmm. latch, it just, and your face is burning and your eyes won't open and your beard is frozen and you can't breathe. You know, I'm going home today. There's snow on the ground. So thanks for yeah. twisting the knife. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, 80 here yesterday? Oh, Something like, or the day so, before yesterday? It was so nice yesterday. Even the rain's nicely. Rain. Who gets rain in uh, March or whatever we're in? I have no idea. Don't we don't. Me. Is it March already? It is confirmation on March. <laughs> wow, I got a lot of stuff to do, actually. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Have you ever walked away from a project? Completely, just total abandonment, sold it. Yeah, I uh, early on on the channel, I've always wanted a Model A, kind of like what you have, like a, you know, and I was looking and looking, well, they're a fortune. Like they're they, going up. They yeah. ain't cheap. No. And I bought a Model T, and you know, it was just a body, and I got it, and I chopped it, and I did a few little things to it, kind of got my fill, put a small block in it, made it run and drive, but it was like not streetable. And then it was like, ah, it's, it was gonna need money, you know, and time and all that. Like, it didn't have any glass, didn't have any door latches, didn't have any of that stuff, and I was like, mm, this isn't the car I wanna do. And then I found a Model E body, so I just, yeah, I kind of sold it. And the internet will not let me forget. That I did that. <laughs> Isn't that funny oh, yeah. how that works? <laughs> you sell a car and I'm just, I'd love to keep them all, but. Uh, you can always just go back and delete that video. And yeah. Just pretend it never happened. <laughs> Is that, was that the secret? I didn't yeah, know that. I'm yeah. like, what Model T? I don't know. I was thinking I was just going to keep buying stuff and shipping it to Rusty Acres there. And I'll just, <laughs> I'll, when I get to it, when I get to it. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Cars show up there all the time. I'm like, did I buy that? Or Man, it's that... on camera. I'm just saying, like. Yeah. I know. <laughs> There's plenty of places to hide junk around here. <laughs> we were talking about this. You should have a car in the South. Like southeast, you should have a yeah. car here. You should have a car out west. Yeah, I do, but none of them run. So yeah. I'm I'm looking for friends. If anybody has got space, <laughs> you know, like I don't want to yeah. burn too many bridges there. But yeah, if I can store some old junk somewhere, I think that might be the plan. If the I got a '56 wagon Chevy, and you uh, say they might make it down here and just you know even storage units or whatever, and just fly in, fly out, enjoy well, it. If anything, it'll store better down here. Yeah, you know. So people have learned this now. I don't know how, what episode this is. Give me a break, okay? <laughs> but we've talked about this. You can't play music doing the YouTubes because you get in trouble, right? Yeah. But when you're doing the time lapses, what are you rocking out to? Or is it dead silent? Or do you actually play music? I'm left with my thoughts a lot of time. That's and dangerous. that's not a good place to yeah, be. Yeah. So you don't play music? I put in podcasts. Okay. A fair bit. And, uh, you know, I've started doing is with my buddies now. I have, you know, everyone has group chats or whatever, but it's a, a physical group chat where you actually like talk into the phone and it plays like the person's voice. So, you know, you get caught up, you can just listen to that and whatever it may be. You're talking like a voice recorder? Yeah. Wow. This is 2023. Have you ever tried texting with dirty hands? It's a nightmare, right? <laughs> I've recently tried s speech to text, well, but I slur and mumble because I'm a Sasquatch. Welcome to 2005. Yeah, it, but it's an, it does not make any sense. It's like bring the floppy disk, the trailer melted, flood zone yeah. six yeah. torch, and everyone's like, "What does that mean?" I'm like, "You get the thumbs up emoji. We're all good." Yeah. It's just Derek. Oh, he wants a double cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Otherwise, what's your favorite music? Just stuck on an island. It's on repeat. Yeah, what, I mean, what genre? Or is it just podcast? Classic rock is probably what I listen Classic to rock. a fair bit. Yeah, like yeah. Zeppelin, stuff like that. I, I, mean, I would have maybe guessed that. I don't know if it's a uh, hair. Really? Or, yeah, it's... yeah. Do you like uh, Black Sabbath? Oh, yeah. Queen? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Man, they were down at the Honky Tonks. They were doing Queen. I was paying for, oh, we paid for like, Queen, Jolene. Danny was up there singing Jolene. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Just, I mean, all the hits, let's be honest. Did you go to Tootsie's? Oh, yeah. That's where it all started, man. Really? Here's the even more important question. Did you see the boot shop where it's buy two, get one free? Oh, Danny's not here. I did. Yeah. <laughs> you better. It was, it was tough there. Yeah. No, it did there. It went to, or is it buy money. one, yeah. get two free? Buy one, two free. Is that what it is? That's what it is, yeah. That's why we don't go to Nashville anymore because it's like, you know, $80 in drinks, $60 for supper, <laughs> $400 in drinks. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah. <laughs> no, luckily my credit card didn't work while I was down here. Stupid Canadian credit card, so saved me a bunch of money. No, I did that. Went and got my picture taken with Alan Jackson cut out, you know, so. Where was that? Oh, on his bar. AJ's. Yeah. Did you go to Jason Aldean's? Yep. 
They got a dang old tractor in there. <laughs> they got it all. In the bar there. We're going to move into a segment called ASAP Olators. Gotcha. These are questions I'm going to ask you. And they're, I don't even know, I don't know the words. They're important. S- they're so important. There's <laughs> big words oh. to explain how important Talk they are. Talk slow, I'm Canadian. So I'm going to ask you these, and you have to just really quickly, boom. Okay. We still haven't figured out what happens if you don't answer quickly. Oh, yeah. I feel like we need like, like a, a trap door or something. Something. I don't know. I'll write that down for next time and do nothing about it. <laughs> what is your favorite decade of automobiles? Oh, twist of my arm. I'm going to say 60s. See, people would have thought 50s. But, wow. By I Camaros like, and all those. I like and... Tri 5 Chevys. And you got to give me like the 70 model year because it would have been out in 69, right? Yeah. So I mean, 70 Late Chev- 69. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like 70 Chevelle, gorgeous, Camaros. You know, you get the early Novas, you get all that. The 50s is, Cry 5 Chevys, that's about all that was good in that era. Ice cream was really oh, popping yeah. in the 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. That's when, uh, like, mint chocolate chips started coming out. Is that a fact? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we don't have a team here, but I was going to have someone like Google Stover, Stovers. Yeah, Stovers. is that what it is? I don't know. I have no idea. You got a guy on it? Yeah, we'll get a guy on it. <laughs> What's your favorite car movie? Okay, so this is a ridiculous one, but... Uh, so you know the Fast and the Furious? Well, uh, 1 through 42. Yeah. Yep. So do you know the third one that's the Tokyo one? Did you ever watch that one? Where the kid goes to Japan? Yeah, he whatever. Got in trouble? Yeah. So the first 10 minutes of that, there's a 71 or whatever it is, Monte Carlo with a big block in it. Yeah. And the guy's... And he wrecked it or whatever. Beating the tar out of it, driving it through uh, housing development. I like that scene. I've, me and Danny have watched that, that part of the movie like 100 times. That's yeah. it. Do you think they only use one car? I think they used a few. It was on eBay. Years ago, when I couldn't afford it, oh, man, and I was that, like, "That would have been cool." But that would have been a nice one because it was a legitimate like, hot rod. That's um, that's unique. I've never heard that before. Well, I'm a neat guy. I would have assumed two lane blacktop. That movie's terrible. Oh, <laughs> the cars, the cars are awesome. Are great. <laughs> <laughs> There's like 17 words, and here's one that's going to get you in trouble. So be careful. Motor oil, conventional or synthetic? Oh, conventional. All right. Favorite car maker right now. Man, I don't have anything new, but the, uh, I mean, how can you say no to the Hellcat? I think Dodge is, what do the kids say? They're the only one keeping it real Yeah. right now? Yeah, that's what I say. You know, the Camara is going away, the new electric eel Corvette or whatever it is. I've ne- like, I don't have anything new performance or whatever, but the idea of a Hellcat, when that first came out, I was like, those guys, those Do- guys get it. <laughs> Dodge is, I don't know who, I would like to be in one of their meetings. They're like, okay. Durango sales are going down. Put a Hellcat in it. Yeah. Next. Minivans. Yeah. Make them 340 horsepower. Next. Yeah. Like they just. You know what happens 2 o'clock in the morning. They're just yeah. like, we need this tomorrow. Yeah. What's your go-to beverage while wrenching? Man, I'm a, I'm a Coca-Cola man through and through. But in the south, the Dr. Pepper, it flows, like, Pepper. flows like wine down here. Oh, yeah. The, the oh. gas station machines never stop. A fountain Dr. Pepper, I tell you. Have you ever done a tornado? What's that? Where you go to the gas station, you just tap a vice, okay, and then you go. Oh yeah, we call it swamp water at home. Swamp water. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably more accurate. <laughs> yeah, they're not bad until you get into like um, some of them, with like sparkling water, yeah, and then like a punch. <laughs> that'll really, that'll really get your juices flowing. Is there a vehicle you'd never own, even if it were given to you? Like, here's the title, here's the key, and you're like, nope, not doing that. No, I drive anything. Really? A car's a car. Would you not take some? Yeah. Like what? Pontiac Aztec. Why? Well, you could go camping. <laughs> <laughs> no, there there are some I would take just for the humor. Like, yeah. give me a Yugo. Oh, I yeah. daily that. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, what's another one? What's the other one everybody says? Help me. I mean, there's the classic Elgo was like a Prowler and junk Prowler. Like that. Oh, PT Cruiser. PT Cruiser. PT Cruiser. The PT Loser. Yeah. Ugliest vehicle ever made, Oof. in your opinion. 56 Chevy. Really? Or sedan deliveries in general. Man, oh. okay, so you're looking at Tri 5 Chevys. Mm-hmm. Like 55, come on. Oh, yeah. You, you know, gasser or whatever. The grill. The 57, it's Cruiser. 56 parts cars. That hurts a lot of people when I say that. Remember some fighting words. I, have, I uh, yeah. A few years ago, I took apart. I had a. I was looking for floors and all that for the Nomad, and like, like the cargo floor was like twenty five hundred bucks. Well, I bought a sedan delivery for like fifteen hundred dollars. Just cut the whole floor out of it, and then I cut 
the door, the pillar, and the quarter, and I sold it as a two-door conversion. I made all my money back. The hate the internet gave me on that for killing that car. I felt bad, but what are you going to do? Hey, pay the mortgage. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what tool do you use the most? Grinder. Grinder? The zip disc, man. Is that what you call a dust wheel? Yeah. Like the cutting yeah. blade? Yeah. Do you got any good scars? Nothing too crazy, I guess. Wow. Do you run a guard on your grinder? I do now after tendon surgery twice. Really? Eh? Yeah. The, the disc blew up? Blew up. He's seen a couple explode on me. Actually, we had like three explode well, maybe, in a row. See, and the, I wish we had some wood knock on wood here, but I haven't had one blow up. I mean, I don't have the Sasquatch American strength, but if you take your time. I think that's my problem. Is you're I under the gun. To, I, don't, I don't have to tool cut. I just go do what, the thing. So when you're, zip, when you're zip disking, do you like make a line and then kind of work it back and forth, or are you just letting her chew? Depends on what I'm cutting. Sometimes I'll scribe, but it's usually just this needs to come off immediately. <laughs> so it's just... All of it. Yeah, I think I figured out your problem. Okay. Yeah. User error. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite meal after wrenching all day? Man, Danny's a good cook, so almost anything she makes, I'm good with. Wow. Okay. I used to be 100 pounds less, so. <sighs> That's what YouTube does That'll to you. happen, eh? You can't, especially when you get into traveling and stuff like that, just, just wait. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> just dial her. The grays are coming in, the pants are getting looser, or yeah. bigger, whatever you want to call it, yeah. Man. Duluth Trading Co. makes like yoga pants for men. That's what these are. But the waist will stretch like nine Okay, I'm inches. just going to say, when you, you lost me at yoga pants for men, but then that's actually look all right. Yeah. Pockets and stuff. I call them my maggings. Oh. They're like leggings. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, whew, tell you what, I could almost walk right with these and bend a little bit. The problem is you think you're doing good because you're 34. Next thing you know, you're 36, 38, 42. And whoo. But you don't have to go buy new pants until you get to a... 48. <laughs> <laughs> the old balloon seats, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to a segment called Help Me Understand. And this is where we had a bunch of people send in emails to in the aisles 9000 at Gmail. We had your fans, there's some of my fans, they sent in some questions. Okay. They're looking for expert advice. Well, let's just call it advice. Uh, let's see what we can get here. Now, we're going to Try to answer these as honestly as possible. So it just is what it is, okay? Let's start off with this. Feller's got a 95K1500. He's got the 350 with the Terminator broccoli injected engine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's got an automatical transmission. Mm -hmm. Was originally a five speed. Why did you, why did you well, do that? Well, those 4L60s are great though, you know? Swap in there. 4L4 neutrals? Yeah. yeah. He has another parts truck with another Vortec he wants to swap in. The question is, what would be a good upgrade to do the engine while I have it up before it goes into the 95? Man, them motors. I've had a few of them trucks. They they make all sorts of noise at like up to like 4,500 RPM and then they're just done. So I guess it depends on how crazy you want to go, but I mean, you can't go wrong with headers. Yeah. You I know, mean, some sort of exhaust, stuff like that. That TBI <laughs> is not the plan. <laughs> <laughs> like on a lot of those things. Yeah, carb swap would probably be carb swap be an easy one. And I guess you want to go crazy. I mean, aren't those like those are Vortec motors? You can put a cam and all that in them, and they wake right up, don't they? Yeah, oh yeah. That's yeah. that's like too new for me. My initial thought would just be rear main seal and spray paint, <laughs> and then just or just cut the mufflers. Or that too. You could just do that. And just it gets louder. Biggest bang for your buck is always going to be a camshaft. Yep. I think you can go get a ninety dollar Summit Racing. Yep. Camship. Just good luck with the lifters and the break-in <laughs> process. <laughs> it's fine. Not saying it's Summit. It's pretty much everybody. It's, it's fine. Issue. Okay. Let's move on to uh, Dustin B. He says, hello, fellow Sasquatches. <laughs> I'm over... He wants to get into classic cars, but he's overwhelmed by the choices and my size of cars knowledge is limited. I love 60s muscle cars, 66 GTO, but I don't want to buy a wildly popular car like a Mustang Chevelle Camaro. Can you suggest some affordable cars for a six foot five, two hundred and seventy five pound Ooh. man? Boy, well, full size Impalas, stuff like that. Maybe I was just gonna say you're gonna have to get into like the Caprices, the Impalas. First gen Camaros are out. First gen Firebirds are out. Man, any any A bodies, yeah, probably anything like that. Even Dodges, they're tight. You need like a Biscayne or an Impala. Try five Chevy. Or you, that. You can get a four-door Tri-5 still reasonable. And there, yeah. man, do I fit those good. Like, you, Did you fit yours good? Did you yes. put the seat back? Like in the, fact, the factory bench seat is a little too close. 
I moved mine back about two inches. Yeah, that's what I did. Bolted her down. Yeah. And it felt like grandma's sofa. Yeah. It's a little lumpy in some spots, yeah. but it had good spraying in yeah. it, you know. And you gotta fight the big wheel. I love the big wheels, but you put a smaller wheel on it, you probably get a lot more room out of it yeah. too. Mark S says, I've always struggled with setting timing. How do you know what RPM to use and why is the vacuum line unhooked? It seems just like timing moves around all the time and I am never sure that I really have it to where it needs to be, where it really needs to be. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Timing does move. So uh, my old man used to teach me, it's all about the initial timing and stuff like that. And I realized that doesn't matter. Wick it up until it stops, you know, advancing and then set it at 36 the, or 38 or 40 timings. you know and, yeah. and those old like those old 454s no compression i mean like 40 all day long i had a when i was young this hot rodder guy i was talking to a firebird first gen camaro or a firebird and he was telling me how he sets timing is he gets in the driver's seat puts her up against the brakes and has his buddy turn the distributor till the tires break loose <laughs> that's how you know <laughs> That'll work. Stand to the side, and that's not advice. Yeah. I don't know if there should be a disclaimer there, but it's like starting a tractor in front of the tire. <laughs> yeah. um, so, RPM, most engines come in by 3,000, 2,800, 3,000. The reason you have the vacuum unhooked is you're setting your initial timing first, which is your mechanical timing. So, having the distributor unhooked eliminates your vacuum timing. So, you're going to set your initial timing. There's little springs that flip out, which is what he's talking about. Crank her up to 3,000, use your timing gun, lock it in, then you hook up your vacuum advance. And all that's doing when you blip that throttle, it's adding a little shot of timing into your engine just so your mechanical timing can catch up. That's all that does. Or you just, well, if it's a Chevy, lock it in at 38, send it. I feel like we all learned a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> but most initial timing is like 10, 12 degrees that get you fired up and then you can adjust it. What I do a lot of times, and Sandin's seen this on the show, is I'll literally do it by ear. I'll fire it up, I'll move the distributor around, you can hear it galloping and running cleaner. I'll back it off a tiny bit, let the engine warm up. If you turn the engine off and it'll start right up, you're golden. Yeah. If you turn the engine <laughs> off and you try to start it and it drags, the rear, rear, back it off a little bit, done. Or put premium fuel in and it's fine. Yeah, or just do that or ignore it, yeah. or put a bigger starter in it. <laughs> Mason K says, I have a small block Chevy 350 that Bach fires only on acceleration at about 2,500 RPM. Any ideas of what I could be dealing with? Timing could be part of that one right there. Yep. I mean, it could be lean. Needs, you know, a little bit more squirter or something like that, probably, like accelerator pump. Those are the kind of basics right there. See, when, when you get those questions, don't you always feel like people, I have this problem. It's like, you gotta go step one and like, you know, make sure it's idling good, set your mixture, get the timing dialed, and then start going. Yeah. It's hard to give advice when because you, you don't know. Otherwise, you're chasing your tail. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be like everything Dan said is right on. It could be a vacuum leak. It could be a burnt valve. Yeah. Um, but start with the basics. Spray carburetor cleaner around the intake, around the base of your carb. Um, yeah, see if the RPM goes up and down, stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. Make sure you don't have vacuum leaks and check fueling. If, if it's only at 2,500, I'm assuming you're cruising, which means you're on your primary jets. So you could be lean popping yeah. or too much timing or something like that. Start with the basics, fuel, timing, compression. It sounds like just buying crate motors to answer a lot of these questions. Yeah, I mean, big block Yeah, would probably, <laughs> probably fix a lot of this. William R says, is it possible for your product to turn this truck from primer to black? Lots of haters say it was painted black, but I have lots of proof it was just sprayed with well, white on that. clear coat. Oh, this, yeah, here's the pictures. Yeah, so this is, yeah, that's completely normal. So clear coat amplifies, he's talking about the vice grip garage patina preservation stuff, and this is the gloss, which you had, you used. Yeah, that stuff's stuff. slick, man. Thank I mean, you. we can do a little infomercial or whatever, but uh, I gotta say, <laughs> like, like, I, like, I hate, I can't handle the pressure of paint because you do all that work and then you got to lay the paint down and then it runs and, you know, once it's screwed up, I, I don't like that. Yeah. This is great. You wipe her on there. You're all dialed. Yep. You have a little shop rag. You wipe the trim off if you want. Yeah. Wipe the windshield off. You know, it's no big deal. A piece of cake. Yeah. So this guy's truck was like a chalky blackish gray. Now it's a shiny black, but yes, that's absolutely true. And it can happen. And the truck looks great. Good job on that. American iron says, and this is a, looks like a 57, be right up your alley. 
mm-hmm. having a violent shaking issue at between at between 35 and up speed. I think he means 35 <laughs> and up. Yeah. It sits very low on coilovers, thinking it is bottoming out. Also, the steering box moves. Never had coilovers before. Am I going in the right direction? The steering box moves. I think that's probably the <laughs> issue. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, buddy, but maybe pull out the, uh, the 916s and put a couple of twists on them. Man, Tri-5s, are, they ride so nice. They do. Like, I've had zero issues. I mean, make sure the front end's tight and all that sort of stuff, but really, it sounds like if your steering box is loose, that will uh, cause a little shaking. I wonder if the bottom bolt on the steering box, because, you know, that's the part of the horn that always rots out. They're back, depending on what he's done there. Oh, that's true. It's right, because it's right beside the, it's straight down behind the wheel. So probably what's happening is that box loose, his alignment is going in and out. He's probably getting the old Chrysler death wobble. Well, that right there, I mean, tighten her up, and then those tripods, they have that little set screw on the top or whatever. You know, just loosen that, give her till she's snug, and then snatch her down, and it'll fix all your problems. Here, you ever worked on Pontiacs? See, like, we have Canadian Pontiacs, which are just Chevelles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just Chevelles. <laughs> Steve G says, working on a Pontiac 400 and I need to put exhaust manifold gaskets on it. I can't remove the engine. What's the best way to get the manifold bolts out to replace the gaskets without breaking them off or rounding them off? Heat. Heat. I just went through this. Headers on a Pontiac 400. True story, I thought the motor was bad. Yeah. I was just ready to hook the cherry picker up to it. Yeah. So we lifted the car up to pull the motor mount bolts out. Yeah. My brother gets underneath of it and says, is this huge dent supposed to be in the oil pan? I said, what do you mean? Crawl underneath, the whole oil pan was caved in and the pan was hitting the crank. So when you turn it over, it sounded like a rod. Wooka, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we undid the headers and had to put them back in and it was hours of struggling. Words were said, things <laughs> happened. The key is have a friend come over with very small hands. You need heat and a... Mini wrench. Oh yeah, because you know those Pontiacs, the heads lay like they, yeah, they the, point down. Yeah. yeah, they're they're nuts. I you know heat. I mean, being up in Canada, everything is rotten. Well, it must have been the same for you when you were in you North know, Dakota and all that, right? Just everything is rotten. Yeah. So just I mean, I don't even look at it. Heat it, spray it, heat it again, spray it, heat it, and then it just come right out. And then while you're loosening it, heat it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then like run it back and forth too. Like for a stuck bolt, people like the thing. The second it's gone, you just. Whoa, Work that thing back and forth a little bit, you know? Yeah. That makes a world of difference. Yeah, it's, some people like to just go full out and just snap yeah. the thing off. I, I mean, if you stab them all off and you get the manifold off, then you got to easy to work on, I guess. But. <laughs> Have you ever seen these things where, like, it's like a twisted coil that you put around the bolt yeah, and you pull the trigger? Do you have one of those? Man, it's they slick. work? Yeah. I always forget I have it. And you know when you remember is when you're right working on the fuel tank or something, like, this is dangerous. You're like, oh, I have a tool. But you're already committed with the torch, you know? Yeah, because that's what I do is just blow four-foot flames out of my torch. <laughs> yeah. And just hope that nothing. I kind of waft it at the car. Yeah. Just to make sure that if it explodes, I'm farther back. Yeah. And then you work your way. Oh, yeah. Way well, you got long arms. That really helps, eh? <laughs> yeah. Look at this 57. Oh, wait, no. That's like a Pontiac. That's a Pontiac. That's cool, though. It is. Anyway, he wants to know who makes an affordable wiring harness Man. for the thing. Basic, no AC, no power windows, no seats, maybe an electric fuel pump. So I get that question like all the time when I'm putting wiring harnesses. I don't know what you do, but like Amazon, like the El Cheapos, I get that. And all I do is I make sure they, they get you. The real cheap ones, the, they have the wiring harness, but they're only like six foot of wire. So you got to extend them. So you got to make sure you get the ones with 15 feet. And I get the ones with uh, dual... Like uh, turn signal and four-way flashers. That's it, basically. That's it. Yeah. And then, I mean, for like electric fuel pumps, I always do that through a relay separately anyways, for the most part. Yeah. Those, yeah, you could just get a four or five post relay from the parts store for yeah. six bucks and just make your and own And those, little... like, they always say, like, it's like a 12 circuit or 21 circuit. I, I mean, I use those 12 circuits, and they have, like, radio and wipers and all. Like, you're not going to use that stuff anyway. So you have all this switch 12-volt stuff yeah. that you just re- reuse. Ten years ago, this was a a big game that companies were getting into. And there was a lot of universal kits out there, but none of them were labeled or anything like yeah. that. And there were a couple that were like American auto wire yeah. and stuff like that. But I think today, even the El Cheapos on the jungle website come labeled. They are. All that stuff. No bones about it. Name brand is the wires twice as thick. Like mm-hmm. the, you know, the copper, yeah. you know, so 
Yeah, but it's the classic yoga you pay for. Buy the best you can, you'll be happy. Yeah. Uh, Richard I, this is the last one we'll do here. He has a 62 old Super 88. Sweet. <laughs> it's a 307 in it. It has a quadra junk on it. Yep. He's done plugs, wires, cap, and rotor. When it runs, it idles fine. But once it's warm, anytime you go wide open throttle, it box. That's just the way it is. <laughs> That's why it's a quadrivog. <laughs> Get a Holly yeah. <laughs> or anything else. If it's like the initial snap in, it's just gotta be accelerator pump. Yeah, it's probably, you gotta figure out if it's lean bog or rich bog, first of all. And a lot of people get scared of quadra jets, but if you could figure out how to actually tune that thing, they're really good car. I mean, drag racers use them yeah. in the 70s. Oh, they are good. But most likely the easiest is to <laughs> take that thing off. Yeah. Just bolt on a holly and good to go. Also look at your timing. You might need just a pinch more timing um, if it's a really bad bog, but. Yeah, give it a once over and buy the El Cheapo brawler and you're done. Yep. Well, you've got a plane to catch. You've got to go all the way back to Nashville and go yep. up to balmy Canada once again. What am I yeah. going to see you next? Power tour? Next yeah, power tour probably. Power tour. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we appreciate you on the show very much. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Anytime. Yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of In the Isle. Stay tuned. I'm sure we might maybe could do something again in the future. <laughs> thanks for watching and listening. See you later.